so we are at almost at the end of uh, the different uh, power plant uh, chapter okay on the unit so it's good that we are able to finish the unit on time and uh, we can actually know how many lectures we actually needed uh, everything is recorded and then i think you can always go back uh, i'll uh, make the ppt and uh, make the pdf of the presentations and basically send it to you for your reference uh, uh, today we are going to do it in a different way. We are just going to look into some power plant instrumentation. We have already talked about power plant instrumentation. Uh, what are the instruments and what are the different uh, hardware that we usually need like for example in the Rankine cycle, the condenser and all that we have talked about and uh, the generator and then the turbine and so on. And then uh, Today what we are going to see is we are going to look into a question and what can be the possible answer for that, okay. So, so these question answer sessions will also help you out to actually prepare yourself for the exams, be it online or offline. And so the first question is what are the two major advantages of a thermal power plant? Although we have discussed all of them, uh, uh, all of these uh, before, okay. But right now what I am doing is I am just keeping it very much to the point and we are doing some objective questions, okay. So just as I read through, I'll also give you some kind of uh, briefing on uh, what exactly we've already read or some new information if it's there, okay. So the two advantages are the first is the power generation is not independent on nature, is not dependent on nature's mercy. Now by this we mean that let's take for example uh, the geothermal uh, energy. Now when we talk about uh, geothermal energy, uh, we need to have a certain location where we can actually have uh, uh, that uh, uh, heat of the earth that is present that can be used uh, for in the thermal power plant, okay. So it's not dependent on nature's mercy, you can construct it in a certain location, okay. And then of course uh, we can actually have uh, coal and uh, some sort of uh, fuel so that we can get the steam, okay. It's not a total picture, it might some kind of nature's mercy is obviously needed because we need the land and all. But let's not go into exact to the literal meaning. The second part is the transmission cost and transmission loss is less. Uh, that's true because the thermal power plants actually can be constructed uh, nearby to the city. And then if you transmit it for longer distances, there is more loss. So if it is near to the city, the transmission loss will definitely be less. If that loss is less, that means it's nearby, that means the cost will also be less. Okay? Now state two major advantages of hydro power plant. I think uh, we are using water in uh, hydro power plant. So we can straight away say that this water actually can be used so it is uh, renewable and definitely it's the cheapest source of energy that we have where we are converting the potential energy to kinetic energy to run the turbine and of course there is no air pollution okay and this is also the most widely used uh, power source uh, in india the next question is what are the components of a nuclear power plant well most of the power plants will actually basically have a, a, a system where you actually can generate heat Okay. In a nuclear re power plant, we have the nuclear reactor which comes on the costlier side but at the same time, this is needs more precautions and all, we have already read about it. Steam generator is something which is common in most of the power plant. Condenser is there so that whatever is the steam which is wasted can be condensed back and uh, reused okay, if you are having a closed cycle system. Uh, and then we can actually use a turbine. We need a turbine, that's the most important part and of course a power generator. So power generator means we will have an AC power generator, so we'll basically use an alternator and so on. Okay? Next, uh, state any two application of a gas turbine power plant, right? So when we talk about the gas turbine power plant, uh, mm, uh, it can be actually used even in uh, smaller regions, for example, the jet aircraft or ships. In fact, there are ships which are actually powered by turbines and uh, the heat or the steam that is being generated is um, actually uh, originating from uh, the fuel uh, which might be a gas. Okay? And then there is a standby plant for hydroelectric power plant. So these are a backup plant for hydroelectric power plant. So if you are having a hydro power plant and you need a backup, mostly it's gas turbine power plants. Next, what is the importance of instrumentation in power plant? Well. Uh, when we talk about uh, instrumentation, we are actually talking about the hardware part and there has to be a specific design and optimum condition under which you can use this, okay. Now these instrument basically obviously it's very important the safety. So if it's a proper instrumentation, you can look into the safety uh, uh, easily, okay. And then the automatic control operation. Now you cannot have a manual power or manpower throughout the 
uh, here okay sometimes uh, some of the system needs to be controlled automatically where you can sit in a control room and look onto the pressure and everything else okay so you need automatic control operation and of course if the instrumentation is right you are basically uh, doing a good kind of uh, lubrication to your system and all the efficiency and everything keeps on increasing so the efficiency is also uh, an important part of instrumentation uh, what is the function of a superheater now a superheater is a term which basically i guess i used it uh, in the initial uh, lectures when we started with uh, different power plants okay it is basically a system which is attached okay so let's uh, look into something which we call a superheater so what happens the steam which is actually produced in the boiler is nearly uh, saturated okay and now this steam as such should not be used in the turbine because the dryness fraction of the steam leaving boiler will be low now uh, what happens is the steam if it is not totally dry there is some kind of moisture present because of which the turbine blood blades might get rusted okay or there might be some kind of corrosion in the turbine blood uh, blades so what we want is we want to raise the temperature using the superheater so that the amount of moisture is minimum okay i don't want to uh, make the turbine blades uh, corrosive okay because of the moisture present so in order to avert the uh, moisture so this is a basic idea of why we use a superheater okay next uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, hydro plant we have already said that before but that was in short okay let's just look into a more detailed uh, picture okay so if you look into a more detailed picture water is the cheapest and the most reliable source of uh, generation of course uh, we need um, a location where we can actually can store water at a higher altitude it can meet variable load demand so depending on how much power you need to generate it generate to supply to the nearby region you can uh, actually vary the amount of water that falls on the turbine and so on okay other controls the running cost is low and the maintaining cost is obviously low okay and there is no ash handling as such so if you consider a thermal power plant and you are using coal as a fuel a lot of ash which is generated we have no such issues here and then of course there is no fuel transportation so the transportation cost also is nil okay but what about the disadvantage well initially if you want to construct a dam and so on these the cost actually is quite high and it takes a long time for the erection of the plant okay so if you want to construct it will take a long, num, uh, longer time to uh, construct the power plants okay the hydroelectric plants are fairly situated away from the load centers so basically it's away from the load center so what happens is the transmission line and losses will be more okay so uh, if i consider something like for my city the load center is located around uh, 30 kilometers away from the city so if it is that far that means you need to transfer the signal or the ac load from that much distance okay so obviously the transmission loss will be there and as a result the cost will grow higher the produce the power produced by the plant depend on the quantity of water which in turn dependent upon rainfall now you must have heard the dam is not working or out of service or like the water content is not enough okay if the dam overflows there is a different kind of risk altogether but if the dam doesn't have sufficient water it's not sufficient to actually run a hydro power plant so that is also a disadvantage what are the primary measurements of power plant so there are a lot of measurements which are done okay in a power plant if you consider a control room there is an automated system from where all the measurements are uh, Uh, seen okay or observed okay uh, and then need, these need things needs to be monitored one of the most important factor is the pressure okay so there will be pressure of steam pressure of feed water pressure on the turbine blades and of course the heater steam okay so all these pressure needs to be observed these are comes under the primary measurement the temperature measurement also comes under primary measurement for example the superheated steam where we use a superheater the feed water which is goes in and the gas temperature okay so these things temperature needs to be monitored well of course it depends from uh, uh, power plant to power plant which plant to power plant is using what kind of source and so on okay but this is a very general overview and then we need to look into the flow measurement of the superheater into the steam feed water and fuel and air blow because uh, if we know the flow measurement or the speed of the flow we can definitely know what how fast the turbine will uh, rotate and the amount of current that is generated and so on okay and of course the level measurement of the boiler drum water level so the water level need also needs to be maintained and that also can be measured
then if there is primary there something might be called the secondary that's it's there the secondary power plant measurement in the secondary power plant measurement uh, mostly it's uh, smoke density okay uh, it can also keep a check on the pollution or how efficient the engines are working and so on and of course the ph value now it should not be uh, acidic uh, or basic uh, whatever flows through the system uh, the water especially it should be uh, more or less uh, neutral in nature because uh, the electrical conductivity might also vary depending on which the efficiency and the long term stability of the power plant might get affected so the electrical conductivity measurement of the boiled water and the feed water is also comes under secondary power plant measurement and uh, the speed of the turbine so these are all secondary power plant measurement but they are in no way uh, uh, not important these are also important at the same time now what is the effect of variation of water ph so i told ph the question is what is the effect of this uh, ph value right so if you look into the effect Mm, what happens is if it is uh, acidic in nature there will be a lot of corrosion which i don't want okay so it will eventually actually lead to the failure of the tube okay but on the other hand if the ph is high that means it's basic there will be some kind of scale formation on the component so basically there will be some kind of layers which will actually form and which will again reduce the efficiency of the engine so we need something which is more or less neutral in nature okay so the water should be neutral so i cannot use any source to uh, feed into the power plant what is the effect of high electrical conductivity in boiler water if you are using the boiler if the conductivity is high what happens now what happens that if the electrical conductivity is high it is indicative of the presence of considerable solids so water conductivity is there and then we have some standard values but on the other hand if it becomes high that means there is some kind of minerals or some kind of other elements or some kind of other solid uh, compound which is present okay what well, this will actually result in uh, forming the drums okay and this will actually create a foam and then what will happen this will again scale the superheater and turbine blade so there will be some kind of layer which is again formed on the superheater on the turbine blade so this electrical conductivity also needs to be checked okay also needs to be kept under check what are the advantages and disadvantages of oxygen analyzer so there is a device which is the oxygen analyzer which can be actually used to know the amount of oxygen present in the water content okay so there are some advantages to it now if you know the amount of dissolved oxygen in the uh, feed water in the thermal power plant uh, we can actually know how much is the oxygen content now if um, the oxygen is much more okay it will basically cause corrosion to the metallic part which i don't want so i will test and i will say it's more oxygen that means that feed water i should not use for long term use of the power plant okay but these oxygen uh, analyzers are uh, accurate uh, up to 5% and the sensitivity is 0.1 parts per billion so that means it's accurate quite accurate and the sensitivity is also good but there is a disadvantage these are not very not too sensitive okay these are okay sensitive but not too sensitive and that's why they cannot detect a very low concentration uh, and and also it will actually register a change in the dissolved oxygen content in 5 to 20 second after the sample water enters the instrument so as you know if you consider it in the boiler part and the water is already entered the instrument um, and if it is having some kind of dissolved oxygen which is minimum and that cannot be detected at the initial stage so that means that is going to pump the um, instrument okay so it's not very sensitive it takes some time for the oxygen to get detected okay then how to control the shell temperature now you know that we are considering steam okay if the temperature of the steam falls uh, the efficiency also falls the speed of the turbine will get reduced and everything will get affected so what is happening is that the shell temperature is actually controlled and how it can be controlled the shell temperature there should be a proper insulation okay so that there should not be any leakage of temperature on the surface of the boiler so there should not be any heat exchange with the surrounding it should be totally inside the system more or less an adiabatic process we are talking about okay so if the temperature decreases then gradually the steam will decrease which in turn will decrease the speed of the turbine so this is quite obvious okay? how to control the speed of the turbine now again the steam is actually used to move the turbine so if you want to control the speed it can be actually controlled by the steam which is connected in the boiler section with the help of what control valve so i hope all of you know the meaning of valve so valve is a certain device which is also used in electronics if you consider something like a diode okay that's basically a kind of valve 
if we use any kind of piping system uh, uh, the plumbers and all they are using valve what happens is a valve basically uses uh, allows a unidirectional flow so that means the steam will flow in one direction it cannot come back through the same direction okay and then uh, this is actually how you control the uh, speed of the turbine using steam and the valve okay so these are some important questions uh, and answers on the instrumentation part of power plant okay i hope uh, this has helped to understand uh, power plant uh, in a better way until then uh, i'll see you